friends, it is I, your friendly weirdo internet 29 year old who dresses like a grandmom and wants to turn your dog into garments. If this is your first time on this channel, fret not, puppies shall not be harmed. There is no need to hide your dogs from me because we shall be making garments from my own dog and more specifically, if you haven't watched this, in the corner over here there will be a link and I will also put it in the description of my previous video a couple of weeks ago where I made this lace yarn out of the fur of my dog. My Cruella de Vil tendencies are not met with just yarn. I need something I can wear. As you do, a couple of weeks ago I was perusing archive.org for some knitting patterns. Because, well, if you want to do some Victorian reproductions, Ravelry will not be your best friend. Though, the Internet Archive, that is. And I found a rather interesting entry called The Second Book of House. And I'm just going to show you the cover because I love it. Look at that beautiful Art Nouveau. That's glorious. Anyway, on page 28 of the second book of house we find ladies gloves and i thought that would be the perfect project for this yarn so today we are going to try to make a victorian reconstruction of a garment using victorian instructions last time when i made the cycling sweater i used a modernized pattern this time we are going to go the full monty so let's see how that goes But before we can dive headfirst into our knitting, we need to do some research. The patent calls for Baldwin and Walker's three ply wide ladyship fingering weight yarn and four needles number 15. That could as well have been Chinese to me. Um, number 15 will most certainly not mean 15 millimeter needles. So we are going to try and find a conversion chart and hopefully we can also find what the gauge was on the Baldwin and Walker Street Ply White Leadership Fingering Yarn. Well, we know that Baldwin and Walker Leadership 3 Ply Fingering Yarn was 100% wool and weighed 28 grams, but that's the only information we get. So Baldwin and Walker, beautiful fine. Fingering wool for jumpers, coats, sweaters, shawls, cardigans, socks, stockings, caps, scarves, children's garments, and all general purposes. That is not saying much, is it? Okay, so maybe we have more luck with the needle sizes conversion chart. Huh. So, A15 is not on there. Well, at least we can say that it goes one step smaller and the 14, so I would guess a 1.75 millimeter needle. But you know what? You know what? To be completely safe, I'm gonna go with a 1.5 millimeter needle. And maybe another thing we should talk about before we dive headfirst into the knitting, which I am dying to do right now, is the historical accuracy. First off, I am saying Victorian throughout the entirety of this video, but actually the second book of house is published in 1902, so that would make it Edwardian. Yet the pattern refers to another earlier published pattern in the original book of house, which was published in 1900, still within the reign of Queen Victoria then. It also seems to me like a very plain gloves pattern, so one that probably has been knitted years before 1900 as well. Another reason I use Victorian throughout this video and in the thumbnail and description and the title and everything is that next to a historian I am also a communication specialist and Victorian is the better SEO word and YouTube is a search engine. Secondly, the materials I am making this from. Did the Victorians or the Edwardians knit their gloves specifically with shangora or dog wool? Well, I couldn't find any references that they did. But I also couldn't find any references that they didn't. What I did find was this reference to um, Red Cross workers spinning dog wool during the First World War. So not that far off. 
So let's say that dog wool gloves in the Victorian or Edwardian period maybe are not entirely historically accurate, but they are historically possible. Now, finally, let's get to the knitting. I also maybe feel like my video on the making of this yarn didn't really show how much of a halo it actually has, but when knitting this, it becomes really, really evident. So these are the first 36 rows of the cuff. I think this is the most easy part of the glove. We'll get to the harder and less logic part because the instructions now tell me to Proceed as in gentleman's glove for 12 patterns. See page 56. Extremely logic to say on a pattern on page 28 that you have to go to page 56. But we'll do that. I guess the Victorians really didn't want a men's pattern where it said, look at the ladies' gloves. Oh, and that special pattern for which I have to look at the gentleman's gloves is a three row repeat of two rows, just knit stitches, and the second one a knit one purl one. So yeah, that was really necessary to show me the gentleman's gloves. <laughs> So friends, I have knitted my glove all the way up to the thumb divide. So now we are going to put all the stitches on a bit of spare yarn. The pattern actually says to get a fresh needle, but the thing is there's just no new needles growing in my garden, so spare yarn will have to do. Okay, that's the hand portion of the glove out of the way. Now, what should we do now? Not get everything fangled, that is what we should do. But that's exactly what we did, of course. Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't, I don't have enough stitches on my waist yarn. Now, for the thumb, the pattern asks me to do 12 pattern repeats, which is as long as this bit, between my fingers if you can see. But I have very stumpy thumbs. As you can see, yeah, I'm not going to do 12 pattern repeats. Just now, every now and then, just uh, fit it on my hand and see where we get because, yeah, this much. <laughs>
veel, Cruella de Vil. Als zij op je pad komt, hou je dan maar stil. So yes friends, here are my Victorian gloves made out of puppy fur. They are extremely comfortable, that's the first thing I can say. Although there are a bit of guard hairs in the puppy fur which make them a bit itchy, but as said before, I am not very sensitive to that, so yeah. I've got some amazing almost elbow length gloves which will keep me warm this winter. I am also looking forward towards petting my dog with his own fur. <laughs> this is like a small, tiny, funny thing and I'm really excited about, which I can do now. For the Victorian pattern, it was actually remarkably easy to follow, even though some of the terms are different than we use them now. But once you know that knit plane is just knit stitch all the way through, there was no issue. It was a bit weird that I had to check for the men's pattern, um, but then also had to check the ladies' gloss pattern because the men's pattern used a thicker yarn, so the amount of stitches was not always the same, but you had to do the same kind of operations. But it worked. It worked really well. I uh, also said previously in the video that I made the fingers shorter, which I did, because I have really stumpy short fingers. I have children's hands. <laughs> That was easy enough, I just fit the glove as I went along. And now I have perfectly fitting gloves. So I do hope you have enjoyed this little Victorian reconstruction project. If you want to see more of these kind of projects, please put it down in the comments. And for everything else, thank you for watching. And if you like this kind of fiber shenanigans, then maybe you could like, comment or subscribe. But that is all up to you. And as for me, I will see you in a next video. Bye! Zo onbetrouwbaar als de maand april. Cruella, Cruella, de wil.